A few more words about the buffer object. So far we've been using it to uh, record sound into by means of the record object here. So uh, recording into the My Sound 1 uh, buffer up here. <coughs> uh, for which we have four seconds of available uh, time, if you remember. Uh, what we can also do though with the buffer object is to uh, retrieve sound from the hard drive. Uh, so this doesn't work in the same way as SF Play, where you just refer to the sound on the hard drive and play it back directly from there. In the case of the buffer tilde object, it um, basically makes a new copy of the sound within the buffer and leaves the original on the hard drive alone. It doesn't touch it once it's recorded it into the buffer, or at least it's sort of transferred the data into the buffer object. Um, um, so <clears throat> we can use a couple of messages to the buffer object in order to tell it to read from a sound file uh, on the hard drive. And those are, if I unlock the patch again, oops, sorry, try again, there we go. Um, well, the first one we will use is read. Um, so if we send the read message to the buffer object, then it opens up a dialog box and we can navigate to a file or a, a folder which has some sounds on it. So I'll go to the sounds there um, and choose a sound to uh, read into that buffer. And so I will choose, uh, what should I choose? Alarm clock ringing. Now. What buffer is doing um, is it's, again, it's referring to the sound on the hard drive and transferring data into the buffer object. But it can only, using the read message, it can only read as much data as the uh, buffer will hold. So in this case, we've got four seconds worth of available space. Um, and so only four seconds worth of the original file will be imported. Um, so that's using the read object. And again, if we go back to the line object here, um, I'm going to go back to our read from 0 to 4 seconds over 4 seconds. Um, you will hear that it will play back the 4 seconds of that file, but it stops abruptly because there is more of the original sound file than could be accommodated by that buffer. That's the read message. There is another message called replace. And in this instance, if I choose the alarm clock ring, notice what happens. We have, uh, what buffer does is it reads the size of the original file, changes the size of buffer to accommodate it, and then loads the sound file into it. Okay, so there's a fundamental difference between the read message and the replace message. Read fits the sound into the available space that buffer has. Replace, um, replace well basically resizes the buffer to accommodate the sound that it's importing. Um, I hope that's clear. And if we go back to the read object, click on that one, I choose a much shorter sound like uh, I don't know, what have we got here? Um, hole punch, which I think is very short. Now, that sound which is very short uh, only occupies about, um, well, I don't know, about um, a, a fraction of a second, about um, a third of a second's worth of um, time. So the rest of the space is completely blank because um, there's nothing to fill it with. If I went to replace and did that, so I'll replace the same thing again with a hole punch, then the buffer is the buffer size is changed to accommodate that much shorter sound. So now we only have. Uh, well, we have about we have about 750 milliseconds approximately uh, available to us because there is some silence after the original sound. Okay, so uh, we can load sounds into the buffer, and now um, uh, I can. Well, uh, if I if I were to tell line to read from zero to four thousand over four thousand milliseconds, it will actually read through. Okay, I think. Yes, it reads through that that sound file. Um, with no problems, um, because um, play will just continue to read no data at all after the 750 milliseconds that the, the file occupies. 
um, so it will just kind of read beyond the end of the buffer. Uh, if we go back to, to the alarm clock ringing sound and I were to go uh, tell it to read from 0 to 4000 although that the buffer can accommodate the nearly 12 seconds worth of that um, original sound if I tell it to read from 0 to 4000 over 4000 milliseconds it will only read the first four seconds because it's only been told to. So again, it's it's chopping off after here because line is only only being told to read, or sorry, play is being only being told to read the first four seconds. If I wanted it to read the rest, I would need to uh, increase the uh, amount of space that it has to read. Right, so now it's reading the full twelve seconds, or yeah. In fact, yeah, the, the sound doesn't occupy that amount of space anyway. Um, so that's read and replace of the buffer object. Let's just check something. Um, I think, yeah, I'll stop with that one for the moment. Because I want to show you in another tutorial um, how you can use the play object for something which uh, is kind of interesting or shows you some, you know, some usage of it.